The Jedi do not believe in killing their prisoners. No one deserves execution, no matter what their crimes. The Council would not normally accept an adult for training, but this is a special case. They say the Force can do terrible things to a mind. It can wipe away your memories and destroy your very identity. Tatooine, Kashyyyk, Manan, Korriban. Revan visited each of these worlds searching for clues to reveal the hidden location of the Starforge. The lure of the dark side is difficult to resist. I fear this quest to find the Starforge could lead you down an all too familiar path. What greater weapon is there than to turn an enemy to your cause? To use their own knowledge against them? A. V. N. It's headphones steel! What's up guys and welcome back to another video game review and in this case it's going to be my replay of the 2003 video game Knights of the Old Republic but in this case or as in the recent cases of my playthrough I'm still playing it on Android but this playthrough is different on two fronts one is that I'm playing I played the game entirely with the Razor Kishi so I did not use touch controls for the most part I did use it a little bit at the end of the game for med packs and that sort of stuff and switching between enemies and the container, the supply containers. But 99% of the game was played using the Razor Kishi, switching between characters, going into the menu, attacking, dialogue, and all of that stuff. And the other thing that I did different in this game versus, I want to say most of the other times I played the game was that I manually leveled up every single one of the characters. So historically, I've j I've only really upgraded my main player, the character that's that you play as Brevin, and everyone else I've done a auto level up. So whatever the default set level up settings are in the game, I've usually just stuck with those. I've never really used the other characters for much playing or anything like that. But for this game, I, or for this playthrough, I wanted to play the game where I controlled all of the characters. I used each of them in very specific scenarios, and I wanted to see how much different the experience, game experience is by playing it this way. So to start it off with the Razor Kishi part of it, overall I want to say that I'm impressed with the Kishi in that whether I was playing for 30 minutes or 2 hours, um, the Kishi held up very well. There was no lag, no latency, no issues. I think there might have been one time for like one minute where it was acting kind of weird, but I think at the same time it was also my phone was acting kind of sluggish, so there might have been stuff in the background going on. So I'm actually putting an asterisk there just to chalk it up to potential phone issues rather than an issue with the cake and the Kishi. So in general though, the experience with the Kishi was very good it held up regardless of how much I was playing um, I, the controls held up they were very responsive switching between characters or um, various elements in the game was really really smooth the only time it didn't really or the only time I had an issue and I want to say this potentially is with the game is that in the Starforge level when you're fighting against the droids before you fight with Malik and switching from a attack mode on the droids to the um, supply containers and the computers was kind of funny because it really only wanted to switch between enemies so I think that might have been a game thing or um, I was pushing too hard on the buttons on the Kishi so it, it was skipping over it or something like that so I had to use the touchscreen controls to switch focus over to the sub supply containers and the um, computers but overall it was a good experience and I recommend playing or getting a Kishi for any game that you play that supports um, controllers um, just because it makes the experience that much better and more fun over using a, um, the touchscreen experience. I did try using the touchscreen settings a couple of times throughout the game just to see how much different that is and it is a day and night difference where you can make do with touchscreen controls it's okay um, but 
it's one of those things where it's not really anything that I can now recommend after using the Kishi. And this really goes with any other controller that you buy that support, or for any game that supports controllers, in that um, the um, touchscreen experience for games is okay, especially with ports that were made in a time that required a keyboard and mouse or a controller. So, um, I want to say that playing Knights of the Old Republic on your mobile device is definitely a better experience with a controller and it also comes down to when you're leveling up your character then you have to go through the menu system in that because this is a, a straight port from the original version to a mobile platform the level up screen is really really small especially when you're looking at the um, looking at your skills and feats and things like that so that menu is still super small so you can see the main title when you're on a specific feed but when you have to touch and go on a uh, mobile device it's not as easy to switch to a particular um, line item it might be a little bit better on a tablet but because this is a mobile device it is that much smaller but because not so the old republic does support controllers you can use the joystick or the arrow keys to um, go up and down between the different skills and feats you can go left and right so you can see what kind of benefits you gain and then you can still use the i think x or a button to select the feat that you want to add and take it from there so that became infinitely easier so it was a lot better to or a lot easier to upgrade my characters that way um, so with that, as far as um, the point about leveling up the character, each individual character manually, um, so for this game, to step it back a bit, I decided to play the canon light side version of the game. So you, as you know, if you don't know, or if you don't know by now, but your main character that you play as is Revan. His mind was wiped by the Jedi in a ba after a battle with Bastila to have that connection, and then... Um, you play as a character and you're ultimately reclaiming your abilities and by the time you meet Malak is that or at towards the, or later in the game when you meet him on the Leviathan is when you learn who your character actually is and the character that you were playing as as a random Republic soldier turns out to be Revan. Um, so as far as reveals go, I mean they give you a lot of hints throughout the game um, that you are that character. So. You and Basila share a shared connection or share sharing dreams as far as the star maps go and where they are. Um, you get an early look, I believe, in at one of the training points I, around the time, maybe at some point in Dantooine, but may, or maybe on Terrace, but ultimately by Dantooine if memory serves, is that you have a shared vision between Bastila and Revan, and you're trying to wonder why you have that vision. So you could chalk it up to that maybe because you have a, this connection of rescuing Bastila that you're sharing her implanted memory. And then, but why you would have memories of star maps, but when she doesn't have it is kind of strange. But then you get to thinking that why would you know about the star maps to begin with? So that's kind of the initial hints that are dropped, or initial hit that's dropped that um, your character might be more important than you realize. Um, so, with that being said, so since I played Light Side Revan, which is a canon because he was a Sith and then he was redeemed, so. And then he ultimately lives out his life with Bastila because they, part of the plot is that they fall in love, they have a child, and if memory serves, um, Setali Shan from Knights of the or from Star Wars: The Old Republic, the MMORPG, is a descendant of Bastila. So a bit of um, story arc there, which is unrelated to Knights of the Old Republic because nothing about that ever comes up. But um, so. By leveling up all of the characters manually, it gave me a better opportunity to use each of them to their fullest extent in various scenarios. So for, um, like for Bastila, there was, with her and Juhani, there was very, or actually for all of the characters except for Jolie Bindo, all of the side quests are pretty much optional. The main purpose of the, um, um, character side quest is so that you can level up all of your characters and gain more export experience points so you have more abilities and powers and things like that by the end of the game but by leveling them up you are able to use them to for various reasons um, to use them a little bit better so the best example is T3M4 
and Mission Veo. So for Mission, her biggest thing is on terrorists to get her get you into the I think it was a Black Wolfer base. So her stealth abilities are the are very good um, for that because you do need to sneak into a pile a junk pile to stick some poison to poison the Rancor. But her and T3M4 have good computer skills, repair skills, and things like that. So for example, we're near. Um, in the Sith base, so between um, going through the Black Volker base on Terrace with Mission Veo and then the Sith base also on Terrace with T3M4, um, using their computer skills, computer repair and security skills allows you to more cheaply access those systems, do repair, like repair droids, access the computer systems and things like that so you don't use as many um, computer spikes and repair parts and that goes throughout the rest of the game so if you're so if you're ever in a scenario when you're playing the game and you do see that you need to repair a droid or access a computer or something like that it's very good to have them in your party because or f just because um, it's one of those things where if you can use your upgrade skills to upgrade your own character to something beyond that then it makes it that much easier to use those points and skills for other things so one of the things I never I don't really get a good grasp on is some of the various upgrade points as far as like wisdom and charisma and care and and intelligence and dexterity and all of those non-computer related skills to upgrade to get enough upgrade points to upgrade my character's various abilities so there have been a couple of times where i think i've been able to up get additional upgrade points to um, use those points for various um things so that my character is more powerful but like in this particular gameplay um because i was upgrading my various other characters and stuff they were doing it doesn't make that much of a difference so when you're playing through the game and you if you want to play more solo especially by the end of the game then you do need to make sure you pay attention to those various upgrade points i think it's pretty static as far as how much you can get depending on all the storylines you can do but for me this time around because i was upgrading all the various characters manually so even for like Juhani and Jolie Bindo. So as far as having um, additional Jedi support in the game, by, by upgrading them manually, I was able to, for example, get Juhani and Jolie to have more, or have better um, attack modifiers. So I think by auto leveling up, they get a couple of basic hits like critical strike and flurry and that sort of stuff. But by manually leveling them up, I was able to get them up to, I think, Master Critical Strike and Master Flurry, and, or at least improved Flurry for Jolie Bindo. And then for like Zalbar, if you want a tank of a character who's super strong, then you can continue to upgrade his strength and then um, various other things like as far as Master Flurry. So you have a very strong Wookiee character. Um, and for some reason, I, and my, I, I was kind of hoping that I was missing a thing where you get the Wookiee rage like we see in Knights of the Old Republic 2. So, but because this one, this game does not have that kind of like your main character cannot upgrade or cannot get the force ability of battle meditation, you do have to um, give Zalbar various other upgrade modifiers, notably in the form of strength and treat injury. So he does have that much more strength and and a longer lasting life. And then with um, Karth and um, Kandorus, I made them the ranged characters. So um, with Karth, I was initially focusing on him to have dual pistol, pistol abilities, but by later in the game, because I needed the pistols for T3M4, I think on Manon, or because I was gonna use T3M4 on Manon, um, I gave Karth the uh, bowcaster. And then with Kandorus, I, I, I kept him with his repeating cannon, I upgraded that, and I gave him um, Master Rapid Shot and Master Power Attack, or Master Power Burst, so, and, and then um, upgraded his weapons focus for blaster and pistols and toughness and things like that. So basically him and Karth, were I kept them as the soldiers, kept them upgraded that way, so they're the ranged characters as far as using those weapons and so in this playthrough the, of the game I think I only I want to say I only died maybe twice one was by accident because I wasn't paying attention to health and I think one other time just because 
um, I was trying to do too much and it overexerted my team. But in general, and it was both times I want to say were early on. So overall, throughout the game, it actually was became a lot easier by playing the game this way. And even though I didn't upgrade my character too much as far or as force powers, I didn't get a lot of master skills. Um, and then um, I didn't have or I only got as far as regular critical strike and master power attack so um, that was kind of a bummer just because I no, I did I messed up at the points early on so I wasn't getting as many of the upgrade points for that but um, but even so even with a slightly lower attack abilities for my character I didn't really notice that it was too big of a deal just because I had enough support with my teams I was using them to the best or I had a team that was use being used to the best of the abilities on each world so even like on Tatooine I used um, HK-47 and Mission Veo so I was able to make peace with the Sand People I was able to get her side's quest with her brother Griff and go down that uh, road um, with Juhani I was able to learn about her past and um, t um, initiate the slaver story arc and resolve that and keep her on the light side with Juhani or sorry with Jolie Bindo um, he doesn't he, because his story arc is built into the Manon storyline so if you visit visit Korriban first and then go to Manon that story will trigger automatically so there's not really much you have to do there with Karth, I was able to learn about his history and his family past and have help him reconcile with his son Destil on Korriban. Um, with Bastila, I think I messed up her storyline, so I went too far before initiating the conversation with the guy who says that, or the lady who says that her mom is on Tatooine. So that was, I think I was getting, I got a little too over ambitious and I went all the way to the end of that story lore. Whereas with the rest of them, it's like you can only go so far before the story arc ends and then their their story their side quest is triggered and then with Candorus I didn't really spend too much time with him just because the storyline with him is kind of monotonous to the point where it's kind of a lot of you have to trigger a lot of war stories and then somehow his storyline is triggered on Tatooine as well along with Bastila's and missions so I didn't really care that I missed him but I did miss him so between him and Basla, those were the only two story side story side quests that I didn't do. Um, T3M4 doesn't have a story arc as far as I can tell in this <clears throat> game, but then it's resolved in Knights of the Old Republic 2 to connect the two films. And then in getting HK47 is the side quest in and of itself in the game when you're on Tatooine. So you buy him from that vendor in Anchorhead and then you can talk to him and try to upgrade him manually, but by the time you get to the, um, once you've completed the Leviathan level in the game and you talk with your team, then all of his functions are ultimately unlocked. So there's very little that you have to do with HK-47 <coughs> unless you want to add him as a character or if you're using him uh, regularly in the game as a character and you upgrade him. But as you upgrade him throughout the game, then you can give him the various upgrade abilities um, with the blaster and things like that so you can make him the droid version of Candorus or Karth um, and you can try to mix him to be a mix between either one of them and T3M4 so kind of a um, the, an ultra powerful droid but for me just I had never really used him too much it was he's an okay thing but because you have T3M4 and then you have Candorus and um, Karth, it's kind of one of those things where if you want to ha combine the three of those kind of those party members into one, um, and then you so you, and then use HK47 as your distance um, person, and then your computer person, you can do that, and then that leaves you free to have, for example, a Jedi like Juhani or Jolie Bindo. Um, so one of those things where Knights of the Old Republic works well, like basically once you've played the game once or twice, or let's say even twice, once on the light side, once on the dark side, so that you have an idea of the storyline, then you can go back and for the third playthrough you um, can then upgrade your characters, use who you want, um, and develop a team that you like as you're playing through and upgrade them accordingly, so you have the ultimate team. Um, and, but so as far as playing the game now, I would recommend um, learning a little bit more about what each of the characters do. There's a lot of um, 
tutorials and stuff online. I think Game Banshee is good for one of those. Um, because I, did, I was looking online as far as story arcs and triggers and things like that. And a couple of side things just to make sure I was doing it right. But I didn't really try to influence myself th for this gameplay. Much like I do for most of them. Just because I, I, I also wanted to remember where certain things were. But... Um, in playing this, so basically, if you want to make sure you upgrade your character accordingly, have uh, upgrade as much as possible, then um, definitely look online. But if you, but I do recommend upgrading your characters manually just so you have the big, the widest possible team possible. And also, if you mess up along the way as far as upgrading your own characters various skills and modifiers and things like that then at least you have a team that's strong enough to support you during the gameplay and that's one of those things that i i know i've messed up the past couple of times is not upgrading the i think it's gearhead the gearhead skill um or the implant level maybe because i don't or i think it's actually the implant level because i didn't get any implants for the past couple of times at least i want to say so that's kind of a bummer but um, by playing the game like I did this time, you get to the game end of the game very easily, and then even on the light side when you're playing when you're fighting against Malik, um, you're able to defeat him pretty easily. It does take some time, which I don't want to say is annoying because he is the final boss, but um, it does take some time to defeat him, especially when you don't have something like improved or master of critical strike or improved or master flurry. Um, but if you have a good um, armor system, then that is definitely the easiest way to go. And then by not having the any computer skills or repairability or anything like that, uh, notably computer spikes, um, it does take that droid um, level before you fight Malak a little that much longer to go through um, because you have to because the default. Or the minimum um, computer spike level to blow them to di to disable those um, droid de um, generation machines is eight computer spikes. So you do have to fight enough of them to um, get those spikes. Um, so what I would recommend is, if, let's say you only have, um, let's say if you happen to have the thirty-two um computer spikes then i would recommend generating two droids to be as your backup so that will not only give you some backup as a team but it also defeats two of the machines and then just go and fight against the um droids so you can um, go into the supply cabinets and get the computer spikes to defeat them um, so to that end, I would recommend for your character um, whether it's early on or later in the game um, I would probably say um, later on in the game, so towards the end and one of your um, later upgrades, whether it's on the Leviathan or Korriban, depending on whatever planet you're doing last, um, and this is prior to the Unknown World, is to get a, maybe one or get maybe two or three upgrade, do one, a one or two point upgrade to um, computer use so that goes down a little bit so you don't have to spend as much time um, defeating droids so that's one of those things I didn't do in this case and I ended up using all my computer spikes to get Revan's robes which I'll get to in a second but um, that would be my recommendation is to get a have you know maybe around two or four to the point where it reduces that computer spike cost down from eight to maybe like six or seven, maybe even five or six. So that way, at least you're not spending as much time on or as many as much time defeating droids to get computer spikes. Um, so for me, that's also one of those things where, because I have I was upgrading those high characters to have computer use and security and all of that, I didn't spend enough. I didn't spend my upgrade points on that, so that kind of made that a bummer. But going it or knowing that and knowing how that is, and when you go into it, makes it that much of a smoother experience when you are fighting them um, or if you have a computer skill then it, the cost is reduced and to that point um, the same thing goes for um, buying Revan's robes when you're on the Star Forge so when if you're on the light side or the dark side in either case you do get a version of Revan's robes if you are playing the dark side then you do get the dark side uh, what are called the what are called Revan's robes so you get a more canon look for Revan as far as early on in the game um, 
And I think you do get a uh, force point regeneration boost by getting the dark side version of memory serves. It could have been a vitality upgrade, but I'm drawing a blank at this point. Um, but if you're on the light side, you get what's called generically called the this called Star Forge robes, um, which are basically a more um, light gray Jedi-ish looking or Jedi robe looking Star Forge robes. Which gives you a good um, defense bonus, wisdom upgrade, and I think dexterity or something like that. So um, after um, the sh so on Korriban, there's a rose for Kel Ulic Keldroma, I believe, which gives you like a defense bonus of five and dexterity of something like seven or eight. So the Starforge robes are an improvement of those for if you're playing on the light side Jedi. So you get a similar comparison to that, but you also get a wisdom boost and some other a couple of random boosts as well for your character being a Jedi. So. If you have the Keldroma robes and you're unable to buy the buy the Star Forge robes because you don't have enough computer spikes, then there's no worry. You're not losing too much aside from a um, light side uh, Revan look um, at the end of the game. And I actually lucked out because I was right on the um, border of the uh, minimum required amount required to buy those robes. I think I was like at 25. So you do need one sp computer spike to access the computer. So um, I was actually one short when I first went into the computer. So I was I think at 24, maybe 22 or 23. So a couple of units short. But I lucked out because one of the dark Jedi that I was fighting, or maybe a couple of them, I wasn't really keeping count, had some, uh, enough computer spikes so that I could go back into go back down to that level and buy Revan's robes. Um, so what actually happened, and you'll see this in the gameplay video, is that um, I was on the level to um, and in the room to buy Revan's robes. I realized I didn't have enough, so I was actually bummed that I didn't have enough unit or computer spikes. So like, all right, fine, I'll move on. I have the Keldroma robes, so that's good enough defense. But then when I got to the next level, um, and this is the level between that level and getting fighting as, against Bastila um, or Dark Jedi Bastila. Um, I got some more computer spikes, so I was like, alright, well, I think I have enough, so I'm going to go back. I hopefully don't have to fight more people, um, which is the case, so once you defeat them, they're gone. But I went back and I had enough, so I was able to generate the ropes for myself, and, or for my main character, and so I was happy there. Um, and you'll see that look in the screenshot or the image artwork for this episode. But... So basically the summary is, is if you want to buy either uh, Revan's robe on the dark side or the Star Forge robes on the light side, you need one computer spike to access the terminal on the Star Forge and then you need 25 computer spikes to um, have the Star Forge build those robes for you. So that's quite a steep um, um, cost to have them. but. If you've played the game at least once or twice, then you do know that you need to have a lot of spikes, and this is especially if you're not upgrading your computer use ability, or, or I think that's all you need to upgrade. But um, I usually bulk or I loop or I loop um, computer use, security, and repair all in one. So if you have those as relatively low, then um, that cost is going to remain high. But if you've decided to become a gearhead and upgrade your computer use a lot then that cost will go down so i recommend as you're playing the game especially later on in the game as you're um, playing that you start bu um, buying a lot of um, parts um, computer spikes and i think repair parts just so as you're playing later in the game or i want to say actually i'll take that back early in the game i would say definitely bulk up on uh, repair parts and parts but as you progress to the game uh, worry less about those the repair parts and start bulking up on computer use if you can bulk up on computer use and go for it but because you're spent also you're also going to be spending money on things like potentially things like med packs and armor and things like that um it is a you do have to do a little bit of money management so that you can um, upgrade as much as possible so the final tip that i recommend when you're playing the game is to so um when you're playing the game and i didn't see too many things on this walkthrough um but i would definitely recommend going to yavin station first after um i believe it's after dantooine but if you can go before 
because I think once you escape terrorists, you have you use Dantooine as a refuge, and then you um, get training to be a Jedi and all of that. But once you're ready to, le or once you're able to leave Dantooine, I recommend going to Yavin Station first and defeating the Rodian ten times in Pazak so that he reduces the cost of all the equipment that he has because he does have some good stuff as far as upgrades and all of that but the other thing you can do is that he's actually the one vendor that you can get a really good rate for selling your um, excess inventory so as you're playing the game you do get a lot of random side you know you get a lot of um, blasters and pistols and um, mines and things like that so um, what I recommend doing is defeating him in Pazok so that the cost of all his various goods goes down so you can get some good high powered armor and weapons but you can also sell him all of your goods and I think that's a, um, separate from defeating him 10 times and lowering the cost but because the cost that you or the price that you get for selling your goods to him is really good compared to other vendors you actually get a lot of money back by selling him all your various equipment um, so for me the biggest thing is I, I don't really use ion blasters too much as far as fighting against droids I still use regular um, pistols and stuff uh, or regular blasters and lightsabers and swords and things like that because it's um, I mean it does help defeat them a little bit faster but um, it happens so infrequently in the game to the point where they're just ex for me they sit as excess inventory so you know selling off your ion blasters and stuff to him mines you can use minimally but you only really need mines for um, the ranker on terrace you can try using them for example with um, Malik or something like that if you want to be a little bit creative in various um, scenarios so like when uh, Malik is replenishing his um, um, vitality then you can try and plant a mine or two and have him run um, over the mines and stuff like that but for me just because of the time it takes to plant mines and stuff like that those are kind of useless but um, by selling them off to the Rodian you do get a lot of extra credits so when you're visiting various other vendors on the various planets then you can use those credits to buy um, computer spikes, repair parts, and all of that various other side stuff, and even um, med packs and stuff when you're with those vendors. So um, if you have a good treat or high treat injury points or a high point treat injury level, then um, you know med packs and advanced med packs work really well. But even the um, uh, whatever the dark red um, med packs for the advanced med, not the advanced med packs, but the right now I'm drawing a blank. Those will basically revitalize your entire health. So you can use your force powers for if you're on the light side for healing yourself. But I try to save that for save my force powers for you know speed and defense and energy resistance and all and like force armor and stuff like that and use med packs for um, health. Just so um, you can, even though you have, you know, regenerating your force points, um, you, having a lot of med packs helps save your force points for all your various force powers. Um, so, and that, so that's the basic tip there. And the other benefit to defeating the Rodian ten times in um, Pazak is that at the so after you get the last star map, so. Um, after you finish core, whatever your last planet is, um, and you've gotten all the star maps, so you've got you've gone through all the planets, you've finished the Leviathan and all that. When you go to the Rodian the last time, you do end up defeating or fight, find, finding the Transdotians that he's been um, the Rodian's been stressed out about. You end up defeating them to save him, and as a token of his gratitude, he gives you access to some of his. Um, special um, behind the scenes um, stuff like equipment that he's been working on that he's not ready to share with people and you do get two lightsaber crystals that are a particular note in the form of one being called um, heart of or one is called heart of the mantle or heart of the guardian and the other one is called guardian of the force 
or sorry, heart, one is Heart of the Guardian and the other one is Mantle of the Force. So when you buy these lightsaber crystals, if you do visit the Rodian and don't defeat him 10 times, the cost of those crystals is super high. So you do need to have a lot of credits, which is really difficult in the game unless you've kept your inventory and you have a lot of stuff to sell the Rodian. But by defeating him 10 times in Pazak when you first leave Dantooine, then he reduces the cost of those crystals. And basically, you know, just like he does with with all the other um, stuff he offers to sell so those um, crystals become really cheap and you can um, end up buying those and using the rest of your credits to buy other stuff um, so you get the you're able to upgrade the mo your um, lightsabers to the most powerful forms if you've kept all the various um, my, um, upgrade lightsaber upgrades throughout the game so that's the one thing I recommend don't not to sell to him until the end so once you've um, up bought those um, two lightsaber crystals from him you'll get you'll now get one red or one like bronze and one blue lightsaber um, what I would do from here or recommend doing is um, find doing the final upgrade of your lightsaber so you get a super strong lightsaber whether you're doing a single lightsaber so you can use one of them if um i recommend doing the dual lightsaber upgrade so you can kind of get that look and feel of revan like the screenshots but if you're doing a single lightsaber you can use one of them um, use whichever one gets you the best upgrade points along with the other crystals so if you're using one you can give the other crystal to somebody else so because ba bastel is not in your party at this point um you can give the other one to I would say Juhani because I think she's the strong, the stronger of the two between her and Jolie Bindo. But depending on who you've been upgrading, I would uh, recommend um, whoever you're using as your character. I would recommend giving them that crystal so they have so they can work as your team on the Star Forge. Um, and then upgrade all the lightsabers so that you have the the highest possible. Um, strength um, lightsabers when you're playing through the rest of the game and this is notably on um, the um, unknown world so when you're using um, for example Jolie and Juhani in the um, temple then um, you have basically there you can continue to use them to um, have the strongest possible attacks and I think there's a workbench on the unknown world in that temple so it's not any particular worry to if you don't use the Ebon Hawks workbench but because you're with the Rodian and you want to get a lot of money to sell off your product or sell off stuff then like all your excess inventory then you can definitely do that um, so once you've upgraded your lightsabers, I would say sell off all your excess inventory that you don't need. So, for example, I don't use a lot of the alacrities and stimulants too much. I did use a battle stimulant this time around, but I would recommend even selling off all of that alacrity so you have as many credits as possible. Then, before you go to the Star Forge system and the Unknown World, I would recommend going to all the other worlds. Um, so notably Manan and Tatooine and buy up as many computer spikes, repair parts, and med packs as possible. So I would say bulk up on the computer spikes. So get at least that get like, you know, 30 to so that you can um, buy your the robes on the Star Forge and then get a lot of the uh, buy a bunch of the repair parts. So if you so when you're on the unknown world in the temple, there are some droids, I think. I forget if you can upgrade the droids, but you are going to need a lot of. Um, actually, I think you need to rip the computer spikes on. Uh, um, otherwise, if you can't repair the droids on the unknown world, then you will need a lot of computer spikes. So I would recommend buying up, definitely bulk up on the computer spikes. So you know, go nuts and spend all your money on that, and spend buy some repair parts. So you know, buy maybe 50, if you can, buy, you know, like 50 repair parts and then spend the rest of your money on um, computer spikes. So that way you can um, bust the droids on the unknown world and you still have enough left over on the Star Force to buy the robes. So that, with that being said, that's really the end of this particular review. So I actually looked out on this gameplay just because... Um, Right after I started playing the game, the announcement came out that they are making a Knights of the Old Republic 
remake um, to come first on the PS5 and PC and then uh, probably other platforms later. Um, so I decided to play through this game after, because I think I had just started and I was still on um, Terrace. So once I saw that announcement, I decided I would go Cannon Light Side, I would go Double Bladed um, Revan. Um, and basically take it from there and continue and because I originally had wanted to play the game just with the Razor Kishi to see how that holds up and then um, upgrade the characters manually but then I figured you know what I'll go canon light side because that's the um, canon story and then um, that way it'll give me a baseline to compare the game to the remake whenever it comes out to see what kind of improvements they do and then also handle the various um, uh, changes and see what they ch do change if it's the graphics or um, story or whatever other um, changes and modifications they make to the game to, to consider it a remake. So there ha I haven't seen too much news otherwise since the, uh, the original announcement but um, now that I've finished the game, I've refreshed my memory of everything that's gone on. I've done enough of the side quests and stories and all of that, so I now have a good memory of what's going on. And uh, whether whenever it's released, I can't wait to buy it to see how that gameplay is and play through that game just to see um, all the various changes and improvements and see how they basically, in short, modernize the game. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, thoughts on the Razor Kishi or thing, you know, my, any other thoughts that I maybe didn't really bring up. Um, same thing with the game itself as far as Knights of the Old Republic goes. Um, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. Um, you can, of course, support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01 for early access to upcoming content, bonus content, and things like that. And, of course, um, much like my prior prior gameplay videos the gameplay for this particular playthrough of the game is all on youtube so i'll have a link in the show notes but you can find them at youtube.com slash patel and 01 but thanks for tuning into this particular review and until next time